In a turn of events, the Lone Star State has now entered into the battle and ends up suing four of the states accused of uh, different election mishaps, let's call them. I believe it was Wisconsin, Michigan, uh, Georgia, and Arizona that they sued. And I thought that was kind of odd. I didn't even know that this was a possibility. Like, that was probably the last thing that anyone expected was just for Texas to start suing these people. But, I mean, more respect to them. Someone's got to do something, right? We got all these rhinos in office who don't want to do a damn thing. They just want to sit on their hands and act like they don't see anything as it's presented right in front of them. It says, The lawsuit by Republican Texas Attorney General Ken Paxton accuses Georgia election officials of illegally changing rules for voter signature verification and early opening of absentee ballots. Ballot envelopes, I meant. And, uh, I mean, that's a pretty fair claim to make. Obviously, things that happened, I'll pull up the, the different changes to the election that Brian Kemp somehow magically switched his position on before he was so against these things, uh, the different signature verification and the absentee ballots. He was stubbornly against them, yet magically his, his opinion changed and he decided, all right, yeah, this is a good thing for us to not have voter signature verification. That makes a lot of sense to me. And even some of the other things that he implemented are just absolutely crazy. And there is no way that they fall within the, the purview that the... the uh, constitution had originally intended. Their quote, which I'm sure this can be considered a fact check to some, with all due respect, the Texas Attorney General is constitutionally, legally, and factually wrong about Georgia, said Katie Byrd, spokeswoman for Republican Georgia Attorney General Chris Carr. I mean, I love that the only fact check that these people ever need is just an elected official saying something, and they're like, that's it. That, that means that it is 100% verified, uh, true. Uh, you, there's nothing you can do about it. When it's like, are these people under oath? Do they have any accountability at all? Do they really think that anything will happen to them if they tell you a falsehood right to your face? Unlike the people at the State Farm Arena who signed affidavits, literally willing to go to jail if they uh, lie in their testimonies. That's some accountability. At least one side has accountability. I love that these people can just walk all over you and it doesn't matter. <clears throat> now this part was just so nuts. How is this something, how is this a process? I'm sure this falls into the purview of a normal process as they always like to debunk it with. Pulling ballots out from underneath the table. That's a normal process. We do that all the time except for throughout the entire day when everyone else got them from the corner of the room. But once everyone left, they came from right under the table because it's a normal process for us. Deleting all of the files in Michigan and the software, normal process for us. We just do normal things around here. Nothing weird going on. It says the lawsuit also objects to a state election board rule that allowed absentee ballots to be opened and scanned two weeks before election day. No votes were allowed to be tabulated until pools closed. What does that matter? You're literally inputting information of the people who voted two weeks in advance. And that clearly is something that gives one side an, an advantage and, and one side a disadvantage. That's sort of the way that uh, the Constitution was written. The Equal Protection Clause makes it so that there is these mail-in ballots, anything, they all have to be treated with the exact same verification process and the exact same statute, pretty much, of how they're handled. But how is that the same? That is not at all the same. That gives one side an advantage. And these people are so dumb. I would love to see the credentials of this Katie Bird. I'm just some guy who literally Googles stuff all day and tries to find information so that I can at least make a fair and valid point to people. Yet these people with all their credentials and all their knowledge, I'm sure she went to a great college and everything. These people are the ones who tell, who are uh, stating what is constitutionally and factually wrong. I mean, something else that sort of fall, falls under the same purview. Sorry, I've said that a decent bit so far this episode, but I guess it's the word for the day, purview. Look it up. Uh, the RNC files Georgia lawsuit demanding access for GOP poll watchers and January 5th Senate runoffs. Sort of an odd thing you'd have to demand from uh, these great election officials, something that is so respected. We have the best integrity over here in our Georgian elections. But don't try and look behind because, I mean, we'll just send you home. We have pipes bursting everywhere water flooding the place even though it was like some little toilet spout i'm pretty sure you can just turn the little knob on it and the water would stop flowing anyway so they had to evacuate people from that because it's a safety hazard 
dangerous stuff going on. And that is the, the, the statement that the news ran with. Remember, every single news site reported on that, that that's what happened. But now, magically, the story's changed, as it always does. Different facts, different information that we get from these higher-ups. But for those with a memory span longer than about 10 minutes, you can easily remember. I can literally recall CNN specifically reporting on that. We have a pipe, uh, reports of a pipe bursting here that we're going to evacuate the place and stop counting. And then later on, they just changed their story. No accountability, the same as the Democrats. Never happened, as if wiped from the face of the earth. So it says, the RNC lawsuit first obtained by Fox News seeks enforcement of two vital facets of the Georgia election code, governing the rights of duly appointed poll watchers and statutory safeguards attending the use of ballot drop boxes as a method of absentee voting. The RNC argued that during the November 3rd general election and the subsequent recounts in Georgia, the legal right of political party committees to appoint poll watchers to observe the process was abridged in numerous polling and tabulation locations across the state. And I mean, that is obviously true. In the video that was released, these people act as if they had the video the whole time. These uh, officials are like, oh, yes, we've had it for weeks now. We uh, have f uh, very firmly studied it and we know all of the things that happened. Uh, there were still people observing. And you can look into the corner, that whole area is empty where people were supposed to be observing from as they were like 10 feet away. That in and of itself, them being that far away, should already be discarded. But then on top of that, for them to have left afterwards and you to continue counting just like 10 minutes after they left, it blows my mind. How do these people do these mental gymnastics? I would love to be just that much of adult that I could literally convince myself that yes, this is... This is the truth behind that story. It'd make life so much easier just to be such an idiot that you could believe whatever someone tells you at face value, whatever these officials tell you at face value. That's the reason that so many people support Trump. They always act like, oh, these Trumpists, I, I, now they're throwing these Republicans under the bus. It's because I hate Republicans and Democrats. I think they're both stupid and corrupt, all of them. But Trump's not. Trump's the one who's going to tell you straight to your face what's happening, you know, they always hate on him because he, he'll be on stage and he'll be like, that guy's an idiot. He doesn't know anything about what he's talking about. And that's what people love about him because he'll tell you straight to your face. He's not like these uh, Democratic people who, uh, yeah, the Joe Biden special. He's a lion dog faced pony soldier. That's that's his version of doing what Trump does, where he's telling someone the truth straight to their face. But it says here, upon information and belief, the same or substantially similar unlawful practices will resume in connection with the imminent January 5th, 2021 runoff election. The RNC's lawsuit claims adding that Georgia election officials are statutorily required to ensure the county and municipal uh, superintendents and registrars are properly and lawfully instructed uh, on the rights of pool watchers and do not implement policies or procedures that impair their ability to fully and meaningf meaningfully observe the election process. This was just something all around these and these magic states where it was too dangerous from COVID for us to allow anyone to stand within six feet to observe the ballots. That would just be dangerous, putting people's lives at risk. I love how COVID comes back. It sweeps back in from, from the back of these people's minds right when they need it. It's dangerous. What, do you want to kill everyone in here by observing the ballots? Here, you stand 30 feet away with your binoculars. That'll make it meaningful access so that you can see what's going on. That's not at all an unfair practice. It's so dumb, man. How do these people get away with it? I really hope that they don't. I hope of all things the Texas lawsuit comes in there just because it's the one that no one expected. Imagine if that's what gets through and, and wins it. That would just be crazy. But let's check out these... Uh, different laws that Governor Brian Kemp put in. This was in April 4th, 2019. So oddly enough, this was, I believe that the WHO reported that uh, COVID was a, a crisis, a health crisis on December, in December sometime. Yet somehow this is about five months before Georgia governor signs law addressing some criticisms of contested 2018 elections. So I always thought that the mail-in ballots was under the facade of COVID, as most things are, you know, COVID, ooh, scary. We can't have people uh, in there voting themselves because that would just be just crazy town. We need to have everyone able to mail ballots in. 
but I always thought that's what it was, but this was uh, enacted before COVID was even a thing, so I'm not sure what a what would have changed Governor Brian Kemp's position here. I'm not sure. I wonder if NPR knew how this uh, statement here would come back. Georgia Governor Brian Kemp has quietly signed a sweeping overhaul of the way elections are administered in the state. I, I really do wonder if they are reaping, like, they're like, I hope no one saw that article I wrote from a year ago, please. It includes several provisions backed by Democrats to address concerns about how non-white voters are treated that were raised during Kemp's election last year. Now, that's something I always find just so, okay, well, I'll get into it here in a minute. It says, under the new law, polling places cannot be changed 60 days before an election, and it will no longer, for people who choose not to vote, be removed uh, from the stater's voter registration list. Now, that just doesn't add up to me. What is the problem with removing people? Why would it? Why would they want it to take longer to remove someone from the voter registration list unless, like, they were planning to keep those people on the list and then fill out different ballots with their registration and then these people who aren't voting they wouldn't even know that they didn't that they casted a vote in this election i wonder if that would be uh something that would happen kind of a weird thing to add in there the law also blocks county election officials from rejecting absentee ballots because of mismatched signatures and when information on a voter registration application doesn't match other government databases the voter will remain on the rules what Think of that. All of these accusations that come around now, think of uh, the different ways that you could sort of bypass the the system of our government to sort of uh, cast illegal votes with these new loopholes that have been from provided. Why would you need mi no mismatch? To like, how is that a thing? You can keep uh, ballots that have mismatch signatures. And if the information on voter registration doesn't match the government database, that's fine. The voter remains on the rules. What? Who would want that to be in place? And as we see here, Kemp didn't want it to be in place for the longest time until, as we saw, April 4th, 2019. It was about a week before this, I believe. But something changed his mind. Something finally clicked in his head. And he was like, yeah, that's a good idea. We'll put in these new different loopholes so that people can get around the system. It says, as a... As a candidate for governor in 2018, Kemp supported removing voter names registration lists if they hadn't voted in recent elections and blocking registration applications that didn't exactly match other government databases. Yeah, that sounds like something that's actually kind of uh, a normal process, as they love to say. That sounds to me like what would be considered a normal process. Yet, now it just needs to be changed. A huge overhaul, uh, but quietly. Let's do a quiet overhaul so that people don't know about it says voting rights advocates said both policies disproportionately affected people of color who tended to back democratic candidates now these this is just the stuff that i'm talking about where it's just so disgusting how they they were these different things like okay if you uh if you may not be aware as you can tell i'm pretty white so i can't say with certainty but i can say that if someone were trying to treat my race as just this uh group that needs so much help they need protection why is it why would a mismatch signature and allowing voters to remain on uh the the voting rule how would that help minorities that doesn't do anything for them they're using them the, their names as a pawn just this would help people of color it won't help me uh, win re-election it'll help them they always do this righteousness where and it just seems so indignified like obviously like i said i'm uh, fairly white so I can't say with certainty, but I would think that these people, it's just so clearly a facade. They're the type of people who tell you one thing to your face. They're at the party. They're like, hey, my best friend over here, the Admiral. And then right when you leave, they're like, that guy sucks. I hate him. They're just those type of people. That's why people wanted Trump, because Trump's going to tell you you suck right to your face. And that's what they hate about him. He'll be on stage. Wow, that guy's the worst. What an idiot. He'll be tweeting stuff like that all day to these people because he's not. That's why I don't like Republicans or Democrats. I voted for Trump because Trump's an, a real person. He's not someone who's just going to tell me stuff to my face and then, and then go and lie behind my back about other stuff. I know what he wants and I support that. Yet these people don't get it because they're so used to their candidates just 
lying to their face and spitting on them. Like, think of it that way. How is it that everything, every single thing that these Democrats want to push for, it's to help the minorities. That's all we want. That's all we really want in the world. If you're someone uh, of a minority of a minority race, think, think if you have like a democratic governor or anything, how much has your life improved from these, these great words of wisdom that they want to to push for so much? They really just want to help you out. They want to help you succeed. How much of that has helped you at all? I know how much Trump has helped everyone throughout the the country, bringing in jobs and increasing the amount that the average person makes. Yet these people just lie straight to your face and then you t you defend them for it. Like you take their side for it as if it's some sort of righteous battle when I don't, I don't think that, I think a law should be looked at. Like obviously there's certain things, equal protection, everything that need to be uh, specifically directed towards minorities. But if there is someone who is exactly the same as me, why would they need different uh, sort of, I want to say advantages, but that's not necessarily it. It kind of is. It's like, why would they need the extra step up there with mismatched signatures and voter registration? How is that? Those two don't even correlate. There's no correlation there at all. It's as if they sort of think lesser of these people and uh, think, yeah, it's okay if they have a mismatched signature. They might not know how to write, right? That seems like a correct evaluation just doesn't even compute it just seems disgusting like i said it i truly just don't even get how these people get any support at all because they really are just the worst of the worst but i also wanted to get next into the inequalities uh act this is the equal uh, equal protection clause the 14th amendment section one all persons born or naturalized in the united states and subject to the jurisdiction thereof are citizens of the united states and of the state wherein they reside no state shall make or enforce any law which shall abridge the privileges or immunities of citizens of the United States, nor shall any state deprive any person of life, liberty, or property without due process of law, nor deny to any person within its jurisdiction the equal protection of the laws. And now that's clearly something that has been broken with uh, Kemp coming in from the sideline quietly, uh, making these different laws put into place for absentee ballots specifically that sort of gives an imbalance to people who went in and voted on the first day and to those who vote by mail uh, this was a ruling from the bush v gore case the court however limited its holding to the present circumstances where a state court with the power to assure uniformity fails to provide minimal procedural safeguards citing the many complexity of application of equal protection in the election uh, process generally, the court distinguishes the many situations where disparate treatment of votes, results, and different standards being applied by different local jurisdictions. So that's essentially what is going on here. Clearly, these different bullcrap things that have been implemented, mismatched signatures being allowed. How? You know what happens if you have a mismatched signature on an actual ballot that you went in there and turned in? It's thrown in the trash, as it should be. Like, there's no way that those things should be counted. It just doesn't make sense. It's almost as if uh, these random changes to the election just a little bit before COVID hit, he somehow magically switched his position. I wonder what could have caused that. What would have uh, made it so that he decided, yeah, you know what? These sound like good ideas, finally, after uh, my time of rejecting them keeping people on voter rolls for in a lot longer time and uh, allowing mismatched signatures. Uh, what do those two sort of add up to? Someone being able to fill out a ballot with someone else's information that they wouldn't know of, someone who uh, would be considered a non-registered voter, right? And then they can put their signature down on it and all is well, even if the signature doesn't match, all is well. Sort of just a weird conspiracy, though. Another one for you guys. But that'll be it for this one. If you enjoyed this video, leave a like, comment, subscribe. And I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye.